A while back while I was sleeping, apparently, Gyra released a new version of the Rotix chain scanner. Let's do some double-sided phased array and see how it handles this eight inch pipe. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. Good one. This is a new or new to me Rotex chain scanner from Gyra Industries. Now a chain scanner is basically the microbe head with the added chain links and both the head and the links have been updated. The new one has modified links that allow you to straddle the weld and basically drive right on top. This is an eight inch pipe sample from Flospec in Edmonton, Alberta. Now I have floss specimens from both Flotec in the USA and Flospec in Canada. I love them both. Now I special ordered this one from Flospec to include nine different flaws, basically everything you could ever expect to find in a real weld, including a transverse flaw and some really difficult interpass lack of fusion. To do this, I'm going to use my Sonitest Veo 3. These 10 megahertz, 32 element Vermont NDT type 10 transducers, my 6 to 10 inch ERVW calibration block from PH Tool, my splitter, and with the gyro scanner, we're going to set this up and rip a 688 millimeter long scan plus a bit for overlap. Now we're going to do 40 to 70 degree at a half degree increment. We're going to put the probes 12 millimeters back from the center line. That gives us the full weld volume plus an extra 25% for the heat affected zone. And because we are at 10 megahertz, our near zone is nice and long, giving us some room to focus. So we'll do that at one and a half T true depth. Now a video with the full setup, all the calibrations, full analysis, that's going to be more than five minutes. And I like to keep these things short and digestible. So I'm going to skip the dead elephant check, the velocity, the wedge delay, and the encoder cal, and I'm just going to hit the TCG. The 6 to 10 inch ERVW block is the middle child of the three block ERVW set. It covers 29 pipe sizes, it colored in on the schedule chart here, and this one block replaces nine standard calibration blocks. Uh, the pipe here is an 8 inch standard schedule, so on the side of the ERVW block, we find the 8 inch standard marking and we use that step. Uh, quickly run a TCG for each probe and as luck would have it, yeah, I did actually end up with the same reference level of 27.7 decibels for each probe. Usually it ends up being a little bit different, but not today. Usually when you scan encoded data, you scan at the reference level without any added scanning gain. This prevents the signals from saturating and you can always add soft gain later in analysis. Now I'm actually going to start at the zero mark, but I should be going to run backwards and do a back scan on this. And what I like to do is when I start the scan is actually run the opposite direction for a little bit, just to kind of get the surface running properly and the couplet flowing. So in this case, when I run backwards, it's actually forwards because it's a back scan, but you get the point. So backwards, then forwards again, slowly not missing any lines and just keep one eye on the scanner and one eye on the screen. Now, remember I did a 0 0.5 degree increment, 40 to 70 degrees. So it's actually 61 focal laws per skew times two skews is 122 focal laws. That's a lot of data. So slow and steady, make sure you don't you know, skip any lines. Keep it centered all the way around, real careful. And eventually we make it all the way back through to the end, which is the beginning because it's a back scan. Now let's dig out the laptop and get into the data analysis a little bit. If we take a look at this data file, the angle cursors, I've set them to slice right through the root. Now we can fine tune that on each skew. And there's the root signal, which shows up nicely just beyond the ID as it should. And if we drop the angle a little bit, you'll see a second weaker signal trace kind of just come up a little bit earlier. Now that is the near side root. Normally we should expect to see a little bit of a flicker right there as the sound sort of rolls and diffracts over into the root. But anything that peaks right along that line is a surefire root flaw on that skew. And sure enough, on the skew 270 at 150 millimeters, we've got ourselves a root crack. Let's move the angle cursors back up. We'll cut that far side root signal just perfectly. And just in this position, we should be able to find almost all of the flaws which are at the root or near the root by just looking at the B scans. And sure enough, we've got one, two, three, four, five flaws showing up between the SKU 90 and the SKU 270. 
On a later video, I'll go into characterizing and sizing each of those. I'll compare it with Toft, but for now, this is just a good example of acquiring good phased array data and what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and thanks for watching.